Good day, dear viewers. My name is Luc Tessier, and this is A Form of Sound Words. Singleness. Being a bachelor or a bachelorette. A person who is not in a committed relationship or is unwed or not part of a civil union. They are a growing demographic in my country. Not sure this unprecedented growth is a good sign. However, regardless of the current trends, single people have always been around and they have played a vital role in society and in the Church of God. The Apostle Paul the preeminent New Testament missionary did most of his ministry, if not all of it, as a single man. In his first epistle to the Corinthians, Paul deals at length on the topic of the Christian single life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, we read, now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. And in verse 7 to 9 of the same chapter we read, for I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner, and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. These two portions of Scripture draws a pretty clear picture. If one can successfully do it, it is good for a man or a woman to not marry. There is no sin if a man or a woman choose to marry, in the faith, of course. But Paul makes it clear that remaining single, as he was, was advantageous. The reason singleness is called good in verse 1 and verse 8 is clarified in verse 32 to 35 of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. There we read, But I would have you without carefulness or undue care or anxiety. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is comely or well-formed and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Again, the reasoning is clear and somewhat obvious. Single people have an advantage when it comes to spiritual devotion and service. There are no husbands, no wives to take care of, no marital work to do. I've been married 26 years. I love my wife, and I love the life we've built together. 
But make no mistake, it's a lot of work. There are a lot of duties, a lot of care that needs to be put in for a marriage to be a successful, happy one. Bypassing all this care and work allows single people to focus their energy, their resources, and their time on the things of the Lord, and indeed, on the Lord Himself. Through a disciplined way of life, the single person can attain those precious words at the end of verse 35 of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Attending upon the Lord without distraction. The Greek word translated attending in verse 35 is quite interesting. It only shows up here in all the New Testament. And it literally means sitting well towards something or someone. Imagine that wonderful picture for a moment. Sitting close by the Lord and there being no distraction. Is that not a precious thought? Should that not be the heart desire of every saved saint? Now we know from the first portion of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that it isn't given to all to remain single. Some have a proper or private gift from the Lord through which one can avoid fornication and contain carnal desires and live a life devoted to the Lord. This begs the question, how does one know if they have the gift? How does one know whether to remain single or to seek a mate? Tough questions and impossible to answer on an individual basis. Generally speaking, though, consider the obvious. How does one know if they have the gift of celibacy? Well. Can you do it? Are you able to exercise the necessary self-control and spiritual focus? Consider the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 37. Are you one that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but hath power over his own will? If that's you, you may very well be one who have received this private gift from God. Now, to the question of should I remain single or seek a mate, this is what I would answer. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. There we read, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek the Lord, the things of the Lord. Make those your focus, and trust that if the Lord wants you married, he'll supply the perfect mate for you. I think many saints get themselves into a lot of trouble by trying to find mates through their own efforts. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, the Lord promises to supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Trust in that. This is by definition, what it is to have genuine, real faith in the Lord. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
I understand that to many, this is not an easy task. But the fact it's hard doesn't mean it isn't true. I understand the temptations that come with the single life. I understand the agony of loneliness. I understand the longings that can come over a person when he or she observes a couple enjoying each other's companionship. I get it. But let me assure you, dear saints, what God has for you, whether it's the single life or the married life, it's the best life for you. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Again, trust in that and beware of covetousness in these matters. Trust the Lord has what is best for you. Hebrews 13 and verse 5 says, Let your conversation or your way of life be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. With that, dear viewers, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.